right, here we are at pyramid number two, or at least in front of pyramid number two. There's the beautiful Sahara Desert expanding for thousands of miles that way. There's pyramid number two. We're a lot closer now. We're standing on these ruins that are in front. We're just allowed to crawl on these because, you know, we're awesome like that. Over there's pyramid one. You can see it right there. Beautiful. Um, it already looks a lot smaller than this one now that we're closer to this one, obviously. Um, in front of pyramid number one right there, that building that you see, that kind of odd shaped building, that's called the Sunboat Museum. And what the Sunboat Museum is, is a few years ago, I think it was like 20 years ago or so, they discovered that hidden around all these pyramids, not just that one location, but all around here, buried underneath the sand, were a whole bunch of rowboats. And people thought that's kind of strange, as you know, it's a desert, doy. But um, they ended up figuring out that it was like a funeral procession boat. Um, and the e ancient Egyptians, the pharaohs, they believed that once they died, they would ride this boat to heaven with all the lovers they ever had, uh, as in the Radiohead song. You guys got to check that out. Um, and they would get all their possessions, and they would travel to the promised land, the, the afterlife, in that boat. So that was pretty cool. Um, I probably told that story horribly, but that's about as good as I can do on the fly. Sorry, guys. Anyway, up front here, there are some littler pyramids. Those are the wives' pyramids, I believe. Um, I'll do some double checking back home to make absolutely sure. There are three of them in front of pyramid number one, and there's a few more over that way where pyramid number three is. Also, if you look really close down there beyond the horsemen, um, you can see both the Sphinx and the, uh, the labyrinth to the Sphinx. Pretty awesome. We're gonna go hang out with the Sphinx here in a little bit, I think, so. Yeah, see you guys later. Peace out. Let's go over a few little interesting tidbits about the second pyramid, the Pyramid of Khafre, or Kefret. It is about 448 feet or 136.4 meters tall, depending on your flavor of measurement. It was first opened around 1372 and explored by Giovanni Belzoni on March 2nd of 1818. It was the first one of these pyramids to be thoroughly explored. And I actually have been inside of this pyramid. Not on this trip, unfortunately. Uh, two years ago I went inside, and let me tell you, there's no ancient giant robot inside, sorry, fans of the atrocious Transformers 2 film. Really, there isn't much of anything inside. It's a long path, which has just earthen walls. They've drilled some little footholds so you don't just slide in. There's a chamber almost in the middle where it's just kind of like almost a meeting place of two of the two different entrance chambers, and then you go up. So the first little hike you are going down the whole time, and the last little bit, you're going up. And once you get into the main burial chamber, it's a room with vaulted ceilings. It kind of resembles, like, what the old-school Monopoly hotels look like. Those red hotels that are made out of wood. Yeah, that shape. There's no writing on the walls anywhere. It's, they're just all earthen. It's got a pit at one end where the sarcophagus was and a bunch of tourists wandering around, and it smells kind of like death and tourists, is how I typically describe it to my friends. But really, there's nothing too fancy in there, because, well, the pyramid was robbed, so they took everything out of there, and where you see the beautiful limestone still left on the top of this pyramid, what had happened was Ramses II ordered that they took all of this stuff, all of the covering of this pyramid, and build a temple with it in Heliopolis. So that's why this one has just a little bit left on top. The rest was just removed by Ramses. All right, coming up next, we're headed off to the Sunbow Museum. So let's go. Whoa. Having trouble focusing. All right, here we are. We're at the Sunboat Museum. Cost us 25 pounds to get in here because we're students, so we got a 50% discount. Nice. Um, this place is just wonderful. It's air conditioned, which is nice. Here's the original pit that the boat was found in. It was found in 
1,334 different wooden pieces that they had to reassemble, I think. Here's the plaque. No, 1,224. So, there it is in English. There it is in Arabic. And Arabic. Yeah. Over here, we have both a stone hammer that was found at the pit over here, as well as the flint knife that they found. Man, this glass is messing with my focus so much. There it is, my flint knife. All Boy Scouts take notice. Bam. These are the original knots that they found, like, tying the main pieces of the boat together, okay? These knots are like 2,000 years old, okay? Learn your knots. Learn your knots. There's Henry, reading, looking at pictures. <laughs> Here's the reassembly process. Unbelievable, look at this. So cool. So, we're gonna walk around, oh wait, look up. There's the boat. We're gonna get a better view of that later, but uh, yeah. We're on the bottom floor right now. Look at this. Here's a model of what the boat would look like if it were reassembled. And by the way, they reassembled it. So this is just like, I'm a giant, and I'm looking at the boat now, being able to get the whole boat in a frame. Decent shot. Look, it's the whole boat in one frame. Check out the great floors. There. Beautiful. If Henry takes some still shots, maybe I'll be able to sparse some of the nicer stiller shots in somewhere. That'd be cool. or put them on my website, giving proper credit, of course. You can see outside, see the Sahara Desert. We were just out there. Remember that shot that I showed of being outside looking at this building? Well, here we are. That structure right there was where we were standing before. So, look at this thing. This boat is like 2,000 years old. Looks almost seaworthy, but probably not. Yeah, definitely not. Giant cracks in it, but still. Made out of Lebanese Caesar, Lebanese cedar wood. Made out of Lebanese cedar wood. This is quite a wonder. And they have to keep it uh, temperature controlled in here because otherwise, you know, not too good for wood. Do do do. Oh, by the way. Look, I got little booty things on. See these? They make you wear these so you don't track sand in from the desert. Pretty neat, except it's got holes in it, so... Eh. Remember, this was never meant to actually sail. Uh, it wasn't meant to be seaworthy. It was a mystical funeral vessel that would take the pharaoh on to the next life. The pharaoh and all of the pharaoh's stuff and loved ones and everything. So, and it would be paddled by his slaves, I think. Hence all the paddles. Look at those giant paddles. I have trouble enough using a rowboat. That's just, yeah. I'm probably gonna have a lot of jump cuts in this, I'm imagining. Now you can see what the, the poop deck looks like. More pieces of oars that are down there. All the people from down below. Hello folks. Move her down there. There's the model. Scale. I don't know if you can even see that. Pretty neat stuff. There's nothing inside of that big box, by the way. That's empty, I've been told. Hmm. You think that's safe? You think that will carry my weight? What do you think, Henry? Uh, what, that <laughs> platform right yep, there? Yep, right there. No, think I, I could don't. jump onto that boat and I'd be okay? Wouldn't try it, man. <laughs> okay, well, Wouldn't try it. maybe in a later video. Yeah. The one that I filmed right before the video I film of me getting arrested <laughs> at the <laughs> ER. 
so all right i think that's it for the sunboat museum um yeah i'll we're gonna go hang out with the sphinx peace out hey everybody um you know pretty regular day here in egypt um just hanging out you know with my buddy the sphinx oh and henry, my henry. So, <laughs> we're just hanging out here with the sphinx it's what we do because the Sphinx is cool. That's just what we are. That's cool. how we roll. Yeah, there he is. Um, face of Cheops, I believe, right? Cheops on the lion? <laughs> sure. I have no idea. <laughs> you can see all three pyramids from here. Pyramid 1, Pyramid 2, Pyramid 3. Pyramid 3 isn't super impressive. Um, not really worth going to if you've seen the first two. So, and you can see it from here. There it is. We is the smallest. It's not, it's not impressive at all. Um, there's a bunch of people down there. They paid to get in, I think. I think we could probably find a way to get there without having to pay an exorbitant amount of money because, I mean, there's people just wandering over there and I know they didn't have to pay. So we're going to go try to figure that out, I think. Peace. So a little bit about the last pyramid. This is called the Pyramid of Menkara. Um, it's just not quite as impressive as all the others. It's much smaller. It's only about... 65.5 meters tall, which is about 215 feet tall, so it's still a big building, but if you've seen the other ones, it's not even close. It wasn't even actually ever finished, so if you want to see all the pyramids, do it, but it's a lot further out of the way than the other ones, and if you've seen the two closer, famouser ones, then there's no reason to go out there. Now let's talk about the Sphinx. The Sphinx is the largest known statue in the world. It's really cool. Um, and there's actually nothing inside of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is just a statue. A lot of people ask me who's buried or what's buried in the Sphinx. Well, there's there's nothing in the Sphinx. It's just this giant statue. And it sits in front of this labyrinth and it's just there as a symbol of the power of the pharaoh buried at pyramid number two. One of the most famous features of the Sphinx is, well, the loss of a couple of its features. Number one, it's missing nose. There are a number of different theories about it, but the most commonly accepted one is that the nose was removed by this man by the name of Mohammed Saim Eldar, a Sufi Muslim, who he led a group of people and they had like made offerings and stuff to the Sphinx and their harvest wasn't nearly as good as they expected so the guy got angry and ran up and chiseled at the bridge of the nose and then underneath the nostrils and it came off and then well he was hanged for it another common theory is that it was blown off by napoleon now this is one that i had heard and was told was true i had believed it for many many years but apparently Yes, they used the Sphinx for target practice. However, apparently there were a couple of sketches made by the Sphinx in 1737 that already show the Sphinx without a nose. Now, the second missing feature of the Sphinx that everybody talks about is its missing beard. However, the beard wasn't thought to be an original part of the Sphinx. The beard was thought to have been added later and then fallen off later because... Well, if the Sphinx had had the beard to begin with, if it was made out of the original stone that the Sphinx was carved out of, it probably would have damaged the chin much more. So historians typically say that the Sphinx had no beard to begin with, and it was just added later and fell off. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Stay tuned after the credit roll and splash screen to see where this picture was taken from. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, so there's the Sphinx. We're, we were on our way away now, uh, standing, you know, guard in front of pyramid number two. You ever wonder what the Sphinx was looking at? You're not gonna believe this. Directly across from the Sphinx, across the street even, is a Pizza Hut. You guys see that? Yeah, it was here two years ago, and I told everybody, and like, no way. Yeah, well, there it is. Pizza Hut, crappy old hotel, and Sphinx must be really tough like 
You know, I, I feel really bad whenever I see pizza on TV and then I'm suddenly like, man, I really want some pizza. Imagine staring at that for all of eternity.